Why, hello there. Would you want to go full-time Web3? Well, now's your chance. Morales is hiring a technical YouTube content creator. If you have programming skills, feel comfortable explaining Web3 concepts in front of a camera, and want to work fully remote, there's a link in the description, so go ahead and apply. Now, back to the regular programming. What is up, YouTube? Welcome back to another Morales tutorial video in which we're going to take a quick overview of the Get NFTs by Contract endpoint provided by the Morales NFT API. It's very powerful as it allows you to query any EVM chain for a NFT smart contract. And as a response, you'll get all the tokens within that NFT collection with the metadata and token ID and so on and so forth. So before we dive into it, let's take a quick look at how you might want to use it. So here I've created a simple dApp that allows you to input a contract for an NFT and the chain it resides on. So let's go ahead. We're already on Ethereum. Let's provide a contract address. Let me just open up my notes so I get the cool cats NFT collection from over here. Let's paste that in here and then get these NFTs. I've set up the endpoint so that it's limited to the 20 first responses, but I can always load more using the cursor parameter provided by the endpoint. We can load even more if we want and we always get the 20 consecutive next NFTs. And we can go ahead and change the chain, for example, to Avalanche. And let's open up our notes again. Here on the Avalanche, I have this small APA's NFT collection smart contract. Let's paste that in here and then get these NFTs. And look at this. Now we get the NFTs for this smart contract. And how quick and easy was that? If you're interested in this, stay stuck in and I'll show you how you can get started with the Get NFTs by Contracts NFT API endpoint. Hey, I'm Jay, your Morales instructor from beautiful Finland. I got into crypto in 2020 and I've been building in the space ever since. In my free time, I enjoy running and at the gym and in the summer, you'll definitely find me at the golf course. Now, let's get stuck in and learn about Web3. All right, so getting started here on docs.morales.io, we have very good instructions on how to use this endpoint. Get NFTs for a given contract address, including metadata for all NFTs, and results are limited to 100 per page. So what this means is that you'll always be maxed out at 100 NFTs per smart contract, and then you'll need to use the cursor parameter to get the next 100 NFTs if you want to get more than 100 at one go. Now here in the right, we also have good instructions on how to use this for different languages. We'll be using Node.js, so this is great for us. And the simple syntax is as long as we have Morales installed, we can use the SDK to use the EVM API NFT get contract NFTs and then passing in all our wished parameters. So we should take a closer look at the parameters that are required. The only required parameter is the smart contract address. So this is the contract address for your NFT collection. But then looking at the query parameters, the chain, if you don't provide one, it'll be defaulted to Ethereum, but you can provide any EVM chain you can see the supported chains on our documentation as well in the API reference supported chains. So here's all the chain IDs you can provide for this endpoint. Now next, if you wish to get your token IDs in hex format, you can do that as well, but that de decimal will be the default. Now, the last four parameters allow you to play around with the amount of NFTs you get within the response and which NFTs you get within the response. If you use the total ranges and range parameters, you'll be able to split up your collection into your desired number of sub ranges over here, as long as they are 100 or under. And then using the range parameter, you can get whichever one of those sub ranges you created with the total range parameter. But I prefer to use the limit parameter, which allows you to limit your response to a specified amount of NFTs from that smart contract. And then as a response, you'll get this cursor parameter. Here you see the response includes the cursor. And then you can pass this into your next request with the same limit amount. And this will allow you to get the next NFTs in the collection. As you saw in the sample at the start, we use the load more button to fetch the next 20 NFTs. And that's what I'll show you how to do with a simple Node.js and React app. So now that we know the basics, let's jump into VS Code and check out the backend first. Radio. So here in VS Code, I have my files for my backend, which is running on port 3000. It's a Node.js Express app, and it has Morales functionality built into it. Now, as you see, every time we run this index.js file, we start off the app, but before that, we make sure that we initialize Morales with your unique Morales API key, which you can also see how to fetch from our documentation or just go to the Morales admin dashboard and fetch your API key from there. Now, the only endpoint we have on this simple backend app is this 
get endpoint for all NFTs. Now what this does is as long as we send a get request with query parameters, we destructure the query parameters and check if we have that cursor parameter. If we don't have that cursor parameter, we just go through the simple Morales EVM API NFT method for getting the contract NFTs endpoint, where we only pass as parameters the query's address and the chain, and we always limit our response to 20 NFTs. Now, if from the client side, we also send a cursor, we add that to our get contract NFTs endpoint call. And now what we do, we store whatever the result is from our Morales endpoint call to this NFTs variable, and we get the raw format of the response and pass that as a response to our client over here. So it's as simple as that, then the rest of it is just catching if there's some sort of error. This is just kind of a fail safe. So this is all you need to really know. We're using the Morales EVM API NFT method to get the contract NFTs endpoint. And depending on whether the client sends us a cursor or doesn't send us a cursor, we'll run the API call with those specified parameters. All right, and so then going back to look at our client, which is a React.js app, here, we have this function called fetch NFTs, which uses the Axios library to send a get request to localhost 3000, where we have our backend running and the all NFTs endpoint. And depending here on if we have a global state variable called cursor saved, currently it's set to null, the parameters we send are the address and chain that are set in the input fields of the app. And then if we've already made a request and we have a cursor parameter, we also send that. Otherwise, we just send the address and chain the user is interested in. And this fetch NFTs function is triggered whenever this get NFTs button or the load more NFTs button are pressed. All right, so now you should have a basic gist of how our front end and back end work. Let's just check one more thing. So every time we run the fetch NFTs function, after we get the response, we console log the response. So we can check what our response looks like. So after we see how this works, we can come and take a look at how we're setting our global state variables over here in the rest of the function. So I should have this running on localhost 3001. Let's open that up on our browser. Right here, we have localhost 3001. Let's open up our console like so. And now we can make a request. Let's use our CoolCats NFT contract, open up our notes, get that from there paste it in here and get our NFTs. It seems like we're console logging our response twice, but this is what our response looks like. We have this data object, which in itself has a results. And here we see we have this cursor. So we've got 20 results already. And using this cursor, if we make this request again, we'll get the next 20 results. Now opening up the results, we have all these tokens, all these 20 tokens from the NFT cool cat collection, and you should be seeing them right here down if you scroll down. So this results array is what we're storing on our client side into an NFTs array. And it has all this data, we have the token ID, the name of the token and the metadata in stringified format. So that is how we're getting the images displayed on our web page. We're parsing this metadata and we're checking if it has an image key, we're using that as our image URL. So that is how simple it is. If we go check back our Visual Studio code, whenever we get this response, we're always just setting our NFTs to what our NFTs are at the start, which is an empty array. And we're adding whatever the response data result result is. That is where the array of NFTs is stored. And for the cursor, we're doing the same. We're setting the cursor to the data.result.cursor. Now, important to note is that when we go ahead and change the address, the smart contract address we're looking for, or the chain address, this will trigger this function, which sets the cursor back to null and sets the NFTs back to an empty array in both, both cases, because this will make sure that when you make your next request, you don't have a cursor parameter for a different smart contract. So that is how simple it is to use the get all NFTs contract endpoint. If we close this up, you can always load for more NFTs and you get them. We can change the chain over here. Let's go for Polygon this time. Open up our cheat sheet over here. Polygon, we have the Voxies. Copy this from over here and paste it in here. Get these NFTs. And now we get from the Polygon network, these Voxies NFTs, and we get the 21st ones. We can always load some more. And now we got the 20 next NFTs from the Voxies collection. What we can do actually is we can go ahead and change our backend script to give us more or less NFTs per request. So if we jump into our Visual Studio code, jump into index.js, where we have this limit, if we change this limit to say 10 over here, save that and make sure 
that everything restarted. Yeah, Notamon restarted our backend server. We're listening for API calls. If we jump back into our app, refresh this, and go ahead and use, for example, Cool Cats over here. Now we should only get the first 10 NFTs. And look at that. Now, as we load more, we get the next 10 and so on and so forth. So that is how easy and simple it is to change how you use the get NFTs by contract endpoint. I hope this video was informative for you and you find great ways of using the get NFTs by contract endpoint by Morales. I'll catch you in the next one.